Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Did you know there's a brand new stamp company in town? They're called The Rabbit Hole Designs, and I'm super excited because I get to show off some of their very first sets. This one's called The Caffeinated Cat. I can't tell you how many times I've felt like she looks, and those sentiments crack me up. So let me show you what I did with her today. I knew I wanted to cut my sentiment out with a speech bubble die, but before I stamped it, I'm going to lay some color down. I used the die to help figure out how large of an area to color. And then I'm going to pull out a few shades of Copic markers and create a bright pink ombre effect. I'll go over it a few times until I have a nice blend. I could have just stamped on the pink paper, but I thought the ombre would be prettier, and this way I know for sure my colors are going to match. Then it's time to start stamping. I'll use my die again to help position the sentiment. Once I get that lined up, I'm going to pull out the cat because I'm going to stamp her at the same time. So I'm going to get her into place and then I'll pick them up with the lid of my stamp platform. I'll use Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp out my images because I'll be coloring with Copics again. Do you have a stamp positioner? They're super handy. I can't even remember a time before I had one now. Now I decided I want to jazz up the sentiment a little bit more, so off camera I clean my stamp, and then you see me prep the paper with an anti-static tool. I'll stamp again with Versamark ink. It's a clear sticky ink that stays wet for a while. So after I, sprink, uh, after I stamp it, I can sprinkle on some clear embossing powder and it'll stick to it. Then I'll melt that with a heat gun. And it's going to give the cinnamon a shiny raised finish. Now it's time to color in my cat. If you're not interested in watching me color, go ahead and skip ahead to 3 minutes and 11 seconds. But there's only about a minute's worth here. I'm going to use warm grays in several shades for her fur. And then I use two light cool grays for her eyeballs, just so I have contrast. After I get her fur colored, I'm going to color her robe with some soft yellows. And then I decided I want the trim to be white, so I bring in the cool grays again. Just add a little bit of uh, shading there. Then the mug and the slippers are going to be colored in pinks. And I have a big gap between my light and my mid pink tones, so I use the tip to tip method to bridge that a little. And also a little bit of stippling while I have a lot of color down and it'll blend in nicely. Then I decided to brighten up her robe a little bit more with some bolder yellows. And then she's ready to be cut out. I used my scan and cut and I added a narrow border around her so that I wouldn't lose any of her cute little curly cues when the machine cut her out. Now I'm going to die cut a few pieces. I'm going to use that speech bubble, line it up over the sentiment, and I'll run it through my Big Shot. Don't worry, it's not going to affect that embossed area at all. I've got a scalloped rectangle die that I'm going to cut uh, from a scrap of black cardstock. I want to turn it into a frame, but I don't have a smaller rectangle die that fits exactly. This one is the closest that I have, and you can see it's a little too long, but that's okay. I'll just do some partial die cutting. I'm going to line up one end and I'll hold it in place with a little bit of tape. And then I'm careful to only cover the part that I want to cut with my top plate. After I run it through, I'll reposition the die over the other end and I'll repeat the process. Now the die is not going to cut anything that isn't covered by my top plate. So you can see this way I get a perfect frame. I had a watercolor background that I created a while ago and it was in my stash. I thought the colors would be perfect for this card. I'm going to test it behind the frame and see what area I like the best. And then I'll cut it out with that scalloped rectangle again. Isn't that background fun? I love the colors. 
It's a technique I learned from Mama Elephant. You drip small puddles of watercolor onto watercolor paper and blow it around with a straw. And then you can fly speck it with a little bit more watercolor. You get those little dots. I've got an A2 card base that I made from some gray wood grain cardstock. I like that it's a neutral backdrop for all of my other colors to pop off of. And I'm going to fiddle with this for a minute and get all the pieces lined up where I want them. Then I'll start sticking them down. I use some PVA to glue my frame to the watercolor backdrop. I like PVA and I put it in a fine liner uh, bottle so that I can control the flow and this way I don't oversaturate my paper. Once I've got the frame glued down, I'm going to use some more PVA and glue this to my card base. And I'm going to weigh it down with an acrylic block while it dries. Then I add a single layer of foam tape to the back of my sentiment strip and a double layer to the cat. I'll peel off the release paper here and get everything positioned where I want it and stick them to the card. Took me a minute to get those lines parallel at the top. And after they're stuck down, I add some shimmer to her eyeballs in the coffee mug with an aqua shimmer pen. And then I finish this card with some glossy accents over the mug. I also use my stylus to move into the t uh, move the glossy accents into the tiny areas. And that's it, folks. This card's all done. So what do you think of this new set? It becomes available on Friday, January 11th. You can head over to therabbitholedesigns.com for more information. There are going to be blog hops and prize packs, and you're going to want to see this sassy new line of stamps. I've also got links on my blog. If you like today's video, please hit subscribe and click the bell. And be sure to come back tomorrow when I'll be previewing another new set. Thanks for watching.